So Al-Jarrana, you know, used to weave, 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 and then she will cut everything at the end of the day. Now we've been weaving for 28 days. We don't want, we don't want to shred everything we made during the month of Ramadan. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave it to us as a gift so that we can, we can as, you know, our uncle, your uncle, my brother, Amjad. Uh, when I asked him how many years you've been fasting the month of Ramadan, he said he's been fasting the month of Ramadan for about 90 years. And he, he, he said 50, he said 50 years. And, you know, remember I asked him two weeks ago, do you feel that you are 50 times better this year than you were 50 years back? And inshallah, from what I know about him, that he is 50 years better because every year we've got to build on the year before. And inshallah, ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we will continue to be worthy of that protection by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Remember, you know, during Friday, or was it, uh, you know, it was during one speech I was given, I said, I don't have the time. It was during Friday, Friday, last Friday. And I said, I would like to repeat that hadith, which by the way, uh, if it is for no one else, please allow me. Uh, for those who are coming for the first time to hear it, that on the day of judgment, look, you know, and I don't know the example that came to my mind as I was mentioning the hadith on Friday, I thought of everybody, everyone leaving London, imagine, imagine this, imagine this. Now everyone is leaving London, going in the direction of Toronto. At the same time, what will happen on the 401? There will be a huge traffic jam. There's a huge traffic jam. It will be unpassable. Not that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't have enough space for all of us to congregate comfortably. Because look, now you finished your uh, uh, life on earth and now you're going to congregate in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So there's big... He says, I want you to experience a traffic jam. And this traffic jam is in Ard al Mahshar, where all of us will be congregated, but seven categories of people will be, you know, called upon you, follow me, follow me, follow me, follow me, follow me, follow me, follow me. Seven categories of people will be taken to a place where they will be under the protection of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for 50 thousand years. Ooh, this is big. Fifty. How many? How old are you? Twelve? Twelve? Just the twelve. I'm talking fifty thousand years. People waiting for the judgment day. Waiting. During that time, Seven categories of people will be enjoying a detour. You know, imagine, imagine that you've been for three hours, the traffic is not moving except a little bit, a little bit, a little bit, and you got, you got to the ramp now. And now, you, you've seen it, you got to the ramp, everybody speeds, they speed. Why do they speed? Because they can't take it any longer. And they are told to go on a long detour before they will come back. Before they will come back. And seven categories of people will be taken on that detour enjoying a beautiful landscape. And number one is a just leader. A just leader. Umar ibn al-Khattab a just leader, someone who is in charge of others and deals justly without being swayed by, oh, but this is my cousin, or this is my brother, or this is, uh, uh, no, okay, I, I, 
I have so much respect. وَإِذَا حَكَمْتُمْ بَيْنَ النَّاسِ فَحْكُمُوا بِالْعَدْلِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, if you will deal or, or judge among, make sure you do that with justice. وَلَا يَجْرِمَنَّكُمْ شَلَآنُ قَوْمٍ أَنْ صَدُّوكُمْ عَنِ الْمَسْجِدِ الْحَرَامِ عَلَى أَلَّا تَعْدِلُ Now don't be swayed by the dislike of those who kick you out from Mecca and throw you out of your homes. You, you, you don't like them. But don't let that stop you from establishing justice. Be just. Be just. Justice is everything. So a person who is just will be protected. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say you deserve protection. And number two, imagine. Number two, I can count, you know, many among you, no, you don't qualify. Okay, you, you qualified a long time ago, but now you don't qualify. Okay, she's hoping that she will qualify. Okay, now number two is a young, sorry, I don't mean to be rude here. Okay. But your husband loves it, okay, okay. He wants to get even. Because they were talking about old age before you came. Okay, so now number two is a young, like yourself. You're young, you're young. How old are you? 13, you're young. Okay, even even 20, even 25, even 30, but then 31, <laughs> so 32, 36, uh, 40, effectively you don't qualify, I'm sorry. Okay, he was looking at me, hoping that I would say, yeah, you, uh, uh, neither of you qualify, you do qualify. Okay, now, a young person, with all the pressures, with all the temptations, with all the things to say, come to me, Tina. As we read in Al Quran Al Kareem, as we read in the Quran Kareem, وَلَهُ أَصْحَابٌ يَدْعُونَهُمْ Okay, they call them, إِتِنَا come to us, leave, leave the, the, the worship of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, come, let's have fun. Resists. Grew up with the love and affection of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, and number three. Number three, a person whose heart is attached to the masajid, just loves to come to the masjid. Is Abu Muthanna here? He will come. You know, there is there is a person. I don't know who, who doesn't know Abu Muthanna. Anybody who doesn't know Abu Muthanna? You don't see the person who's 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 always here, just any time, Allah, without without expecting anything. Is always here doing something, looking for something to do. These are the people whose hearts are, are in the masjid. And number four, number four, two friends who became friends for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which means that they are always conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, always reminding each other of the things that please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They became friends on that basis, and when they depart, depart, all of us are going to depart from each other, as the hadith that we mentioned, okay? And then number five, look at this, number five, a person who is invited to commit a sinful act, and resists by saying, I fear Allah, I'm not going to do that. And number six, a person who gives charity and they try to conceal it. So much so that his left hand does not know what his right hand gave away. In my case, it would be so that his right hand does not know what his left, left hand gave away. Because I'm left handed. You're supposed to smile. Come on. I just told the joke. Okay. And finally, Finally, look at this. We keep coming back to Ramadan. Keep coming back to Ramadan. A person, a believer, who remembered Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone at night, started to cry. Tears came down. And doesn't have to be at night. You know, many, 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 many people, when they see the Kaaba for the first time, some for the second, some for the third, they just look at the Kaaba and their tears start coming down. 
Okay. And Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam told us, he gave us, he, he gave us, you know, a guarantee. He said two categories of eyes will not be touched by the hellfire. The hellfire will not touch them, which means that they will not be in the hellfire. Two types. عَيْنٌ بَادَ التَّحْرُسُ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ وَعَيْنٌ بَكَتْ مِنْ خَشْيَةٍ An eye that kept away guarding the Muslims during time of war. Sleepy and tired but was awake guarding against any attack and an eye that cried because of the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, imagine if you are alone again, and this is what I hope the habit that we will develop. I want to say especially to the young people, especially to the young people, it is not, it is not an easy thing to develop, to wake up for Fajr and Prick. And I'm talking to the young people, and I'm saying, be persistent, keep on trying. Even Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and told us through Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, bis salati was tabir alayha. Be patient. Be patient. Be patient. Keep on commanding your family to wake up to pray, be patient. Now, one day their response will be, <laughs> somebody is laughing. <laughs> oh, so many parents are laughing. Okay, but there's one particular example I <laughs> I hear every morning. <laughs> And, and, there's somebody who's just sitting quietly with a smile. Okay. Now, it is not easy. It is not easy, and Wallahi sometimes, sometimes, when I wonder, Matthew, sometimes you may think, if you think for the sake of finding an answer, it's okay. Some people say, no, how dare you? How dare you question that? No, I, I sometimes say, Ya Allah, why didn't you make the first prayer when we just get up? First thing, when we get up, we'll do our first prayer. We get up our soul time. Not only that, no, no, let's assume we get up to go to school or go to work. The first thing that we do after we get up, we do our first prayer. Why? We don't know. But think about it. Think about it. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is now challenging, challenging your willingness to develop that kind of personality that is Rabbani, that is, that you, you, no one, no one would get up from their slumber for anything if they don't really love the one they are getting up to. Not, I, I tell you, Allah, okay, if you have, okay, I'll pretend I'm not looking to the left. If you have to get up because you need to catch a bus from Saunders School going to Canada's Wonderland, and the bus is leaving at 7 o'clock sharp, what time will you get up? <laughs> Yeah, no, 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 but it, even, even, I will go to bed very late because I have to prepare what am I going to wear and what am I going to take with me and what, all of that. And it's two o'clock, go and sleep, you have to get up. No, 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 I'll be fine. Don't worry. Go to sleep, you have to wake up for suhoor. Uh -huh. I hope she will come next week. <laughs> so you do 
something because you love to do it. And I, maybe I'm wrong, maybe I'm wrong, but if you get up every day, not because Allah is getting anything from it, but because I'm getting something from it, because I know that if I have something that I really need and I'm alone with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala after Fajr and I say, Ya Allah, please, I have a request. Can you please look after it? What do you think my relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? I think, it's just I think, I don't know. But it is, it is that test. Do something that is slight, but with time, with time, by the way, it becomes a routine. And not the kind of negative routine. There is even a dua that if you pay, because you are saying, Ya Allah, uh, I'm going to turn on the alarm. Please wake me up for Fajr. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will wake you up right at Fajr time because you asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be your alarm clock. Because you said, Ya Allah, I, you know, I have an appointment with you. Yeah, I, I wake you up, don't worry. This is, this is the kind We just read it in Surah Al-Dayat. That those with wit remember these things and they relate to them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent us lots of gifts in this Ramadan. Are we going to uh, accept the gifts or say return to sender, unknown address, or the person doesn't live at this address anymore. Many times that nafs zakiyya does not live at that address anymore. It's not there anymore. We need to bring back that nafs zakiyya, that purified nafs, to that address at which it used to live when the address was Deen Al-Fitra. This is, you know, maybe we can call it 786 Deen Al-Fitra. And the postal code is SubhanAllah, Allahu Akbar. And the city is Ramadan. And the province is Islam. This is the address of the nafs al the address of the purified soul. Please, please, don't give your notice to vacate on Thursday. I hope that you did not send a notice to vacate. Because if you, if you want to come and live at that address next year, it may be already occupied. And if you may look for another address, it may not be to your satisfaction. Please stay at this address. Ramadan, Ramadan was not hunger and thirst. I tell you something. I, I felt guilty this morning when, when my son rushed to our bedroom and said, you forgot to wake me for Sahur. And the thing is, we had a late something to eat and we woke up right at Fajr. And my son now is hungry and thirsty. But you know what? I feel it. I know that his satisfaction that now he is doing something for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will soon, if not already, take over that feeling of hunger and thirst and will continue with the sustenance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to continue, used to continue days of fasting. And he said, 
don't you dare be told as compared to do what I do. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yuqa'imni wa yisqeen. Allah provides me with sustenance and quenches my thirst. But don't do it yourself. Now, in summary, before I will open the floor for questions, I would like to say that we are fortunate that we received one more Ramadan, the same as I remind you what I said when we were preparing for the month of Ramadan. Remember what Al Mu'alla ibn Al Fadl used to say. He used to say that the messengers, the, the, the companions of the messenger of, of Allah used to make dua for six months for Allah to make them live until Ramadan. For six months. And then they used to live in the shadow of Ramadan for five months afterwards, which means that Ramadan was everything because they understood what Ramadan was all about. They understood the legacy of Ramadan. They knew that Ramadan was something special. And it continues to be. There's no reason why Ramadan should turn into food delicacies. There's nothing wrong in having special foods for Ramadan. But this year, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, more than any other year, brought Ramadan upon us with vivid images of hunger and death. Not that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala could not provide for all of His servants equally on this earth, but He said in the relatively negligible, non-existent time on this planet, people will be tested with hunger. وَلَنَبْلُوَنَّكُمْ بِشَيْءٍ مِنَ الْقَوْفِ وَالْجُوعَ وَنَقْصٍ مِنَ الْأَمْوَالِ وَالْأَنْفُسِ وَالثَّمَرَاتِ We are going to test you, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Surah Al-Baqarah, Al-Qur'an, with hunger and thirst and, and, and lack of security and war and, and, and. وَبَشْرِ الصَّابِرِينَ It needs patience and perseverance before we will go to the plentifulness which is eternal, forever. Which, in a sense, you know, for some students taking a certain program, it feels forever. Ooh, when is it going to end? I've been in school for ages. I can't wait. I know somebody who says, I can't wait until I graduate. I know someone. Okay, I can't wait. Wait a minute. Be patient. Be patient. You are going to graduate, inshallah. And when you graduate, Allah, you will forget the nights when you used to wash your face and drink coffee and, and try to stay awake because you were trying to, to, to get an extra minute or hour because tomorrow at 7 in the morning, you've got to write your final. You've got to write your final. The same thing, when we graduate from this life to the hereafter, everything, everything, because Rasulullah tells us from a hadith Qudsi, you know, reported by Muslim, that when we will go to the pleasures of Jannah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to ask us, did you taste any pleasures in dunya, we will say, not at all, Ya Allah. You know, we, we did not, the pleasure started now. And then he will ask those who were suffering their entire life in this dunya, have you ever suffered? Not at all, Ya Allah. We never suffered. <laughs> now we are in Jannah. Now it is eternity. So we are as we read in the Qur'an, 
وقل اعملوا على مكانتكم اني عامل فسوف تعلمون. Keep on, keep on going, keep on going. You're, you're just getting to the end. I am working with you. I am, Rasulullah صلى I am working with you. I'm not just telling you to do something and I'm sitting in my palace. Like many of the leaders that we are discovering today, they were enjoining others to be benevolent and good and good and they are living in a different planet. No. In the Hamil. So we are doing all of this, Allah, for a purpose, for a place, for a time, for a, 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 a result that it will be sin of us. You know what? A person who says, I am satisfied with a C. Just get me a 50 and let me graduate. Okay. You may get a 50, but you know what? When you will apply for a job, a person that graduated with honors and has an impressive transcript will make it to the executive positions and a person who just Barely graduated with a 50. Sorry, 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 sorry. The same thing. Jannah is not uh, homogeneous. Jannah is not homogeneous. And you will just say, I'm okay, I'll be satisfied if I will just live on the streets. You know, just tell me it's Jannah. And I... No, 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 it won't be like that. It won't be like that. Like that. And remember, that finally, if you recall from Surah Al-Dariyat, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us about those who are fasting, about those who are muttaqeen. إِنَّ الْمُتَّقِينَ فِي جَنَّاتٍ وَعَيُونَ آخِذِينَ مَا آتَاهُمْ رَبُّهُمْ آخِذِينَ مَا آتَاهُمْ رَبُّهُمْ إِنَّهُمْ كَانُوا قَبْلَ ذَلِكَ مهطعين كان قليلا من الليل ما يرجعون وبالأسحار هم يستغفرون وفي أموالهم حق للسائل والمحروم الله سبحانه وتعالى استمعنا سبعود المتقين that they will be in جنات وعيون آخذين آخذين when you know the verb أخذ means literally took something Akhada means I took it and it's with me now. It's with me. Akhada means I took it and it's with me. Akhidina ma atam rabbuhum. Whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave them, it's with them already. This is the fruit of taqwa. This is the fruit of taqwa. I hope that inshallah we will continue after Ramadan to make dua that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make us live the legacy of Ramadan. Ameen, Ya Rabbil Alameen, Jazakumullah Khair. If you have any question, any comment, anything you would like to say. Now, uh, next Sunday, next Sunday, I would like to have a shura, be practical. How many would come if it is still, you know, Eid celebration or if it is, you know, I'm ready. But if I would like to see a show of hands of those who will come next Sunday, inshallah, if we have, inshallah, we will be here next Sunday, inshallah, inshallah, we will be here. It's long weekend. Is it? Oh, oh, long weekend. It's Labor Day. It's Labor Day weekend. Okay, I'm looking at the uh, Ministry of the Interior, uh, and, and I'm, I'm receiving instructions. <laughs> Okay, uh, so anyone? <laughs> no, uh, anyone will be affected by the long weekend. You'll be okay. Tishan, you know, I always look at Tishan. MashaAllah, uh, if you want the definition of a cool headed, wise person, MashaAllah, what do you recommend, Tishan? Okay, inshallah, we'll be there. Any question, any comment, anything?
Seven. Oh, oh, that's that's right. That's right. Now number seven. No, I did mention yes, seven. seven. Can can I, the last one? Uh, excuse me, sister. Uh, uh, I told you. I told you. Number seven. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 Y
to the future generation, those who know more English than Arabic, those who know more Urdu or English than Arabic, those who speak, uh, uh, you know, Turkish or Bosnian, or, you know, I say to them, please, please. And I, I say it with, with full, with complete honesty. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, wallahi, many a night, I feel that, am I doing what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants me to do? Because Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, all of you are responsible, and each one is responsible for his flock. Kullukum ra'in. All of you are responsible for something. And each one of you is responsible for his flock. So if I, after I continue my journey, I leave on the highway of life those who are not good drivers, because it so happens that the driving course that you are taking is called Islam, faith. And the instruction that teaches you how to drive is the Qur'an. And Prophet Muhammad Wasallam is the driving instructor. And if you do not learn how to drive and practice, if, you know, I refuse to help my children learn how to drive, uh, then I'm guilty. And, see, I love examples, and sometimes I, I uh, you know, uh, Huda is learning how to drive now, and she said, can I drive to the center? I said, not today. <laughs> you know, I don't want to arrive there stressed out. Maybe, maybe when we return home, inshallah, you can drive, okay? But imagine, imagine, if I leave the highway, and my children cannot even read from the Qur'an. Just read. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to ask me on the day of judgment. Why? What did you do? What did you do? Oh, I uh, bought every single PS3 game in the market to my son. I, uh, you know, took my children on any trip they could dream of. I, uh, 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 bought uh, this, I bought that. I see some smiling, so they can relate to that. MashaAllah. Uh, uh, you know, uh, okay, everybody has something to, you know, all of us, but please, I need you to take learning Arabic very seriously. Make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Make dua, yes, you On the same subject, uh there's still a week for registering for the Arabic classes on Saturday. See the practicality of what we say translated now to at the center. By the way, by the way, did you hear? Who did not hear about the expansion project of the center? Who did not hear it? Did not hear it? Everybody knows that the center, inshallah, the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, inshallah, is going to expand and we are going to have hubs of activity, inshallah. We would like to have so many things. So many things. We were thinking of, of inshallah, having attached to the center, the, now it's the Islamic Center of Southwest Ontario. Imagine the Islamic Institute of Southwest Ontario. And in that institute, there will be uh, uh, courses at the college level, at the high school level, at the continuing education, adult education, for Muslims, for non-Muslims, outreach to teach about uh, Tafsir Qur'an. This is one course, to teach about Islamic history, to teach about Qur'anic Arabic. Now for Arabic, next Saturday, we are starting before the expansion. We, are, we have teachers, we have books, we have notes, we have everything. So you may register your children or yourselves, or yourselves. You know what? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will put that as, you know, uh, uh, a kind of hujjah, which means 
that works for Jeff and 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 you know, I say, you know, uh, it was available, but you did not do anything about it. Nothing. Uh, you see, I, I work five days a week, and Saturday and Sunday, you know, are the only two days. Look, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala injects barakah, injects barakah in time. If you want something, Allah will put barakah in your time and you can do it. You can do it. But don't say, you know, I I would love to see all my children read Arabic, read Quran, uh, uh, start to, 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 to continue their journey with the Quran. And I hope, inshallah, 